the most recent event is a publication that came out last Monday, a week ago. Uh, it was a study done by researchers at the University of Colorado Boulder. And that study, the most startling revelation of it was that the fish, the cutthroat that was native to the South Platte drainage has been ex almost extinct except for one population, that being Bear Creek. So the last of the fish that were originally native to the South Platte are now found in this four mile reach of Bear Creek just outside of Colorado Springs. The fish here are not in their native range. We're in the Arkansas drainage. So what, it, what happened was uh, a gentleman, Joseph C. Jones, back in the early 1870s or 80s, was hoping to build an inn up here along Bear Creek, which was a, was a popular trail up to the top of Pikes Peak at the time. And he wanted to have an inn for the people that were on that two-day journey. And in doing so, he also created some fish ponds and brought in some fish, most likely from perhaps Trout Creek, which is one of the closest trout streams to Colorado Springs at the time. And that flows north to the South Platte drainage. So even though we're in the Arkansas drainage, that fish got brought in inadvertently and placed in the Bear Creek. And those fish have survived now for 130 to 138 years. The, uh, you know, just having one population of these fish, uh, you want to really protect them. And we've, we've known for a while that these fish have shown some, some variations of genetics that, taught, that told us they were fairly unique. We didn't know how unique, but we knew that there was kind of something special. So uh, a number of years ago in 2004, we closed the stream to fishing. And then in 2008, we started building bridges across uh, on the trail, across the creek to prevent sedimentation. We also started doing some more projects for over the last three years and now fourth year, where we've put in sediment traps uh, to keep any erosion coming from the trail, to keep it from going into the, the stream and doing any kind of harm to the fish. So the Forest Service just made a closure a couple of weeks ago to close it to uh, uh, camping and to no fire, to add some additional protections. So there's a number of agencies that are working, uh, both federal, state, and local, as well as working with user groups that have been using this trail for decades to try to make this drainage and the, the habitat here as best as it can be right now. Another part of what we've been doing here to try to secure this population is back in 2008, we removed about 65 fish and we moved those into our hatchery. We protected them there. Those fish were able to reproduce and spawn, have, have uh, a number of young fish. Those fish have now grown up and they're in two different hatcheries in the state. And by next year, they'll be ready to spawn. When they do that, we'll have essentially thousands of Bear Creek fish, greenback, pure greenback cutthroats that will be used to put into other streams and lakes to replicate this population. So that gives you more security in terms of having not all your eggs in one basket, you've got them in a number of places. And, and primarily we're gonna put those in back into the South Platte drainages that's north, north, northern Colorado, which is their original home. It was remarkable uh, to say the least. Uh, uh, we've had some surprises along the way as the genetic techniques got better, uh, but nothing quite to this level that there was some native cutthroat here that we never knew existed before. And it just so happened that fish was residing in this, in this stream. Part of it was uh, elation at finding, getting to an end of this long genetic journey that we've been on. The other part of it was, you know, some you know, reflection of disturbance of what all the work that's gone on so far We've always used the best science to get there, but as that science changed, some of that work uh, is right now going to have to be reevaluated again. So that's part of it. The, there's been a lot of folks, uh, a lot of agencies, 
uh, non-governmental agencies have been involved in this recovery work for decades and uh, we were well on the way to actually recovering what we thought was the previous greenback cutthroat when things changed on us. So now we're kind of resetting the clock and the challenge now is to work off of what we know and move forward uh, with you know recovering the species. Another story here that is, that's the good part of it is that over the last three decades we've protected lots of cutthroats. Some of these cutthroats may, according to the new research, may not be in the right place. Nonetheless, those, those, those fish populations exist and they're protected in habitats through actions that agencies have taken over the years to maintain that habitat. So all those pieces, all the pieces to this genetic puzzle, even though it's been rearranged by lots of stocking over the years, we still have all those pieces intact.